what should you be copying from a pro player serve? There's definitely things that would make your serve a lot better. And there are some things that would not add anything to your serve. Now, the one thing are the fundamentals. No matter who you put next to each other, any great server will have certain fundamentals and they all have them. Now, then there are style things and those you might actually develop yourself, just different ways that really show that this is you. Now, but what is what is sometimes the difficult thing to distinguish. My name is Micah Babel. I'm a former top 30 WTA pro, 19 times Grand Slam competitor, and I'm showing you fantastic footage with the permission from Zen Rackets of Roger Federer and John Isner. The link for Zen Rackets YouTube channel is down in the description as well as their Instagram channel. So make sure that you visit them. It's fantastic footage, which actually allows me to show you what you should copy when you see the pro serve. So here in the starting position, you have a little bit of a style difference already. Roger Federer here to the left is leaning over a little bit more. His uh, starting position starts a little lower with the racket tip pointing to the ground, whereas Isner has the racket cocked already a little bit. He's a little more upright. Um, but what you already see in the starting position are the similarities and the fundamentals. So starting with the grip, that's definitely a continental grip, and they both already have a pretty big hip turn here. John Isner already a little bit more because his right leg is staggered back a little bit more. His feet are apart a little wider than Rogers, but both of them prefer this position because that will allow them to really deeply load off the back leg and get that really, really uh, important hip turn in the loading position. One other little style thing is Roger has the ball in the throat of the racket and it looks like uh, John has it a little bit more on the strings. But other than that, it's all fundamentals and those teeny tiny things are style things. You can do whatever you want um, in those little things, but the fundamentals have to be right. So let's keep rolling forward here a little bit. And this is where you'll definitely see a difference in style. So John Isner is releasing the ball at a perfect position. I'll come back to that in a second. But you see a very different racket take back here from Roger Federer. So whereas John Isner likes to keep his racket pointing to the right here and to the right of his body, you see that Roger Federer brings his racket back with the tip facing down and it clearly comes over to the left side. Doesn't matter how you bring the racket back as long as you have a couple of things happening in the next position. We're going to that in a second, but the other fundamentals that you need in this um, stage are that you're releasing the ball between the chin and the top of your head and both do and that you keep your arm straight. You do not want to have a bend because that just um, adds to the inconsistency of tosses. Now, the other thing that you're seeing, it looks like John Isner is already looking up a little bit more to where he's going to make contact with the ball. Whereas one of the things that Roger Federer is known for is he is still looking at his opponent. Now, the next stage, is the loading stage. And here we definitely see a big difference in how both players arrive at that. So you do see here that John Isner is using a pinpoint position or a stance. So he brings his right back leg up to his left. And this here is what we then call the loading position. Roger Federer has a platform stance. So that is a difference, I want to say, in style. Both are fundamental ways to serve, but at some point, Roger has chosen to stay in a platform, whereas Isner prefers 
his pinpoint. And there is no difference in the ability or hardly any difference, very negligible difference in how you load in terms of how much power you get out of this turn. And that also is a fundamental. So whether you use a platform or a pinpoint point, it doesn't matter if you do it properly. Now, some other fundamental things that you see in the loading position. You see that they're side on to the net. You see that they have a shoulder over shoulder and hip over hip staggering here. So the outside that faces to the opponent is higher than the inside, than the backside. So again, both came to this position really differently and that is style, but they're both getting to the same fundamental position, which is really, really important. You see here, both still have extended left arms and they're really ready after this deep load to come up and out. The next station is called the cocking position and that is right here. When the butt cap points up to the sky, up to the ball, face points up, the inside of the elbow points up, and most importantly, the chest looks up. And that is, for many rec players, a very difficult position to get into for many reasons. Uh, it could be lack of mobility, it could be lack of practice, could be lack of you know, proper teaching. But again, this is a really important stage. The other thing that you see that both have in common is again, they're still side on, both have their left arm tucked. And a lot of times for rec players, this is already the time when the right hip and the right shoulder turn too much. So again, for both players, you see that they're still side on. And then they're accelerating up to contact point. I'm gonna to try to find this here for Roger because that is another technical thing that I want everybody to see how they're leading up to the racket with the edge. So you see the edge here is coming up and you also see the same thing here with John Isner right here. So the edge of the racket is leading up to the ball right there. So it's almost like he's hammering up and trying to nail a uh, hammer and nail into the ceiling. So both of them are actually going to serve wide and they're still though facing the racket to the racket edge to the ball. So now at contact, you see the next shoulder over shoulder and hip over hip. So I don't have quite as many um, frames here in the left video of Roger Federer. So I can just scroll up to a little after he's making contact or right before, but I'll leave it at the right after. Again, both are still side on more so than fully open. So the left hip is still pointing, especially here with Roger, is still facing to the opponent more than the right. And that is a really crucial moment. And you see again, now it's the reverse shoulder over shoulder and hip over hip. And with John here, you can't see the tucked left arm anymore. With Roger, you can. And the other thing is you don't see any space between the legs, which means very clearly that they're side on. So as I said, both players are hitting outside serves or wide serves. And you see here in this position, you see what is called a long axis rotation. And that for many rec players is not the easiest thing to do. And I'll explain what the components are here. So I'll find that for Roger. So the forearm pronates 
and it is an internal rotation of the shoulder. And what that does to the racket here is the side with which they hit the ball actually points to the outside. Sometimes really hard to get for uh, recreational players because of limited mobility, you're not flexible enough, uh, you've never trained it properly, you weren't taught it properly, but that is um, a fundamental that a good server has and you also see the result of their heavy loading in the beginning. Both of them clear the ground by a lot. Now, both of their heads are still balanced. There is no looking down. There is no, you know, falling off to the side. And after this long axis rotation, the racket, of course, still comes across the front of the body until they land and you see the fundamentals there again for both they made contact the racket comes across your belly button you land on the left leg they have different ways of coming into loading but the landing is the exact same thing and the left arm here flies back as it helps the body to keep balance, regain balance, both eyes or sets of eyes, I should say, are at their opponent. And then immediately come into a ready position here. You also see that both hit serves wide with the goal of bringing the ball over the shoulder and away from their opponents. So this is Diego Schwartzman. Um, I can't recognize uh, who this guy here is, but he has to go to a slice even. And you saw that here with Roger's serve, the ball bounces and then continues to spin out. So to my mind, most players really have the most differences if we see them in the beginning, in the start, um, in the lead up to the release how they're bringing the racket up. But from then on out, all good servers have the exact same fundamentals. They can be tweaks, of course, uh, how far they toss the ball out, uh, where they're tossing the ball, depending on what kind of serve they want to hit. But if two different players choose to hit the same type of serve, you will see the same execution and the same fundamentals, of course. So these are the things, ideally, that if you develop your serve from start, and I'm just going with Roger here, from start, grip, stands, then take back to release, fundamentals here, to loading, to then getting into the cocking position, accelerating up to contact point, then decelerating with a long axis rotation, and then with the finish here, landing, balancing, and then getting back into a ready position. Those are the fundamentals that you need to develop. Anything else that varies big time from this is probably not gonna help you develop a good serve. And it may be style that leads you in a wrong service motion. So you really gotta be careful of what is style. And there, Bob's your uncle, you can do whatever you want but you have to get into your fundamental stages.